Today, with me, the Redneck Gamer, we are going to go over how to play the base game for Battlestar Galactica. Everything that you saw at the outset of this video, I'm sure was very daunting for or I'm sure was very, very daunting for you, but this is what you see in the base game. So, like, or like I was saying, Battlestar Galactica is a or the board game of Battlestar Galactica is a game that allows you to be any of the characters, at least of what's available, in the TV show. The caveat being, any of you could be a Cylon, instead, or instead of only the characters that were set in the show. So the premise of this game is you are what is left of colonial civilization, and you are the crew of the only surviving military ship of the colonial or of the entire colonial fleet, the Battlestar Galactica. As members of colonial civilization, you are trying to get to Cobalt, which is the last known sanctuary where humankind can sur or can survive against the evil murder death kill robots known as the Cylons that we inadvertently created. Anyway, The problem is, some of us are secretly Cylons, because when we last saw them, they looked like these guys. All happy and pleasant and shiny and metal and ouch. Now, they look just like us. So we're gonna go. So we're gonna go through the basics of the game, and at some or and at some point, there's gonna be another video coming out where more and more people are gonna be able to play alongside me. So we can do either as so we can do a demo game and sh kind of show you how everything works. Unfortunately, I am not able to access that right now. So these are the ten characters that we get in the base game. Here. In the base game here, we have our pilots like Lee Apollo Adama or Kara Starbuck Thrace. We have our military leaders like Carl Hilo Agathon or Will William Adama. Notice the relationship here? Father, son. Anyway. We have our political leaders like the slimy Gaius Baltar, Tom Zarek, and Laura Roslin. Each character has certain things they're good at represented by these colors and these numbers here which we'll get into in just or which we'll get into in more detail in just a second but we can see from this Laura Roslin is really good in politics and is pretty good in leadership not really good at much else Gaius Baltar on the other hand is okay at politics is moderate in leadership and moderate in engineering. We go all the way down here to Galen Tyrol, or Chief Galen Tyrol. Okay in politics, pretty good in leadership, and pretty good in, in engineering. Same thing if you look in each of these and each of these. You will be using those different skills to do different things as this game progresses. Or as this game progresses because every turn your character will be able to move anywhere on either colonial one here or throughout the galactica here and then they will be able to take one action then the cylons do their evil or do their evil cylon stuff now how or now how does all this turn or or how does all this turn order stuff work and everything? Well, to start off, after you've chosen your characters, everybody is going to draw, or everybody except the player who starts, is going to draw their skill cards. You can see the names and the colors coordinate with the names or with the categories and colors on the character sheets. That is because the numbers represent how many of each card you or they draw on their turn. So Laura Roslin is really good with politics. She draws three politics cards. She's also pretty good at leadership. She draws two leadership cards. 
and she does that at the start of every turn. For actions, you can either do an action that is on one of these cards, for instance this one, declare emergency, actually that's not a good example, or like this one, executive order, where you choose another player and they can either move and take an action or take two actions. So you can do an action on a location, example research lab, draw one engineering or tactics skill card, so one engineering or one tactics. You can also use one of your character actions. These are where things get fun. To keep with our example of Laura Roslin, religious visions. So it, or we'll get into crisis cards here in a second. But you draw two crisis cards and you choose one to res or one to resolve, and you put the other at the bottom of the deck. Or her second action, which is so powerful it can only be used once per game. You draw four quorum cards, again, we'll get to those in a minute. Choose one to resolve and put the rest at the bottom of the deck. And she does not need to be president to do that. Or what do you mean be president? Or well, two characters specifically, one uh, political leader and one military leader, get a special role within the game. And these are, these are some of the cards from different expansions, but these are the president and the admiral, whoever the highest ranking political leader is gets the president title and what that does is it allows or it gives you an additional option for an action you can draw a quorum card into your hand and that is these guys and what these are are different uh, additional actions or abilities that the president has that they can play on somebody else for instance Authorization of Brutal Force. Uh, you destroy three raiders, uh, a heavy raider, or a centurion, and then you can roll a die to lose population. That, or just to kind of give you, or you can get somebody out of the brig for free. There's another one, I think it's called a rest order, where you can. Yeah, a rest order. You can send somebody to the brig, so that so that's always fun. The highest ranking military leader starts as the admiral, which gives you control of nukes, which are awesome because nukes. And what you can do is you, or and it gives you an option of if you launch a nuke at a base, or you can launch a nuke at a base star. This is for a different expansion, so we're not going to use that exact one. But what that does, you can launch a nuke at a base star, and you have the potential of destroying all the Cylon stuff here. All kinds of fun. However, everybody also has a negative trait. Staying again with Laura Roslin, she has a terminal illness, which means that she has to discard two skill cards in order to use any, lo or any location action. So if she were to be in, let's say, the president's office, if she wanted to use the action here in the president's office, she would have to discard two of these skill cards in her hand. That kind of sucks. After, then, after all, or after the actions have been taken on your turn, you draw a crisis card. What do the crisis cards do? They do crisisy stuff. For instance, this one. One of these will be drawn every single turn. This one happens to be a choice. The admiral would choose whether they want or whether the president and admiral discard two skill cards, or, or the president can give the admiral title to the president, or sh she gets sent to the brig, which is not good. So every turn, so every turn, we'll move. They will move. They will take an action, and they will draw a crisis card. Make sense? Good. These, something different is going to happen depending on which one you choose. The bottom corners here, I'll, I'll pick another one to show you. That was not a good, come on. This, the bottom, will happen every turn. This is something to do with the Cylon ships, whatever's on the board, that's these guys, activating. Then, or same thing with this. Then in the bottom here, there is this little starburst thing. That is what activates the jump track. That's this guy. 
What does the jump or what does the jump track do? In order, to, well, like I said at the outset of this, you're trying to get to Cobol. How you get to Cobol is you have to jump the fleet a distance of eight, and then you have and then jump one more time. You do that with these destination cards. Each one of them has a number on the bottom here. Every time the fleet jumps, what the Admiral will do, this is a bad example because I haven't shuffled this deck yet, but the Admiral will draw two of these, choose one of them as the destination they just jumped to, and have that set as the current or as the current or current location, and the other one gets put on the bottom of the deck. Now you do that when this total reaches eight, then you jump one more time, humans win the game. How do Cylons win the game? You see these up here? These are all different resources. Something you will see on the or on crisis cards like this, this is actually a perfect one to, to show it. If you pass this, or if you pass this, you gain one food. If they fail it, they lose a fuel and destroy a raptor. Or they can choose to just lose a food. If any of these resources, fuel, food, morale, or population, gets to zero, humans lose. This is what's called the or this is the boarding party track. Remember these fun looking little characters that I that we were looking at earlier? Yeah, those are what are called centurions. There are some crisis cards that place centurions on the or on the boarding party track. If a centurion gets all the way to the end here, humans die and lose. The Battlestar Galactica itself can also take damage. Just like that. If at any point the Galactica somehow sustains or were to sustain six points of damage not including these resources humans die and lose so as you can see there's a good number of ways for Cylons to win only one way for humans to win well how do you find out what team you're on at the start of the game What's going to happen is you're going to build what's called a loyalty deck that has all these cards in it. Ignore the sympathizer for now. Depending on how many players, you're going to have a certain number of Cylons and a certain number of or a certain number of Cylons and a certain number of not Cylons. In other words, or in other words, humans. Everybody draws one skill card except for or except for one specific character which you don't or which you don't need to know about as of yet wink wink nudge nudge or everybody draws one loyalty card and that will tell you if you are a human or if you are a Cylon. Each Cylon card has a specific ability that it allows you to do. On your turn, you would reveal the or you reveal this card. Say, "I am a Cylon." You do whatever it says, as long as you're not in the brig. And then you jump over to the Cylon fleet and do all kinds of bad or do all kinds of bad stuff from there. It is arguably the e This is mechanically. A very easy game where this comes into play is or where this becomes difficult is it is a social deduction game so you don't know who's who that is the core concept of the game couple quick things to go over uh, before or without having a sample game that we can go through is the sympathizer card here um, that or this is an equalizer for or this is an equalizer for four and I think it's six players. 
Uh, but basically what this is, is when these resources, it's a lot easier to see with the different scripting that I have. This is on Tabletop Simulator, by the way. Um, but if any of these gets down to half of whatever its starting value is, they're considered in the red. And... Or it's considered in the red. If none of the four main resources of this game are in the red at the time the sleeper agent phase comes, which remember what I was saying about distance? Uh, when you get to distance four, then you go into what's called the sleeper agent phase, which is everybody draws another loyalty card. So you may have been human the whole time. Now you find out you're a Cylon. But if none of the four main resources are in the red, whoever has the sympathizer card uh, becomes a Cylon, or becomes a revealed Cylon, but does not get a Super Crisis card, which we'll go over as soon as I'm done with this, and cannot activate the Cylon fleet location. Uh, it's for four or six players. If any of the resources are in the red, they get thrown into the brig, and become a much less powerful human because there are two locations on this board that have diminished uh, abilities of what they can do and those are the sick bay where you only draw one skill card and the brig where you can only play one skill card into a skill check now what are these super crisis cards that i was talking about those are these guys these in and of themselves look bad enough right yeah, there's not there's nothing good that comes out of that. Yeah, try that on for size. <laughs> so same amount of colors, but twice as difficult to pass, and it's really bad if you or if you fail this one. This one. Depending on where or on when in the game, it's not so bad. This one's really bad all the time. Because this, you could realistically be five turns away from Kaboom. That's everything I have for this game, guys. If you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to drop a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe. It would really help or it would really help things out. Uh, if you want or if you have any uh, requests for uh, games that you want me to go over, uh, leave them down in the description box below. Uh, I will try to follow this up with a sample game uh, coming up or coming up soon. I make no promises on when that's going to be. It unfortunately, my schedule is not the only one that's going to be involved in that, but I will do my best to have that up and running as soon or as up and running as soon as I possibly can. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed or enjoyed, and I will see you next time.